ಸಚ್ಚಿದಾನಂದಾಯ ವಿಶ್ವೋತ್ಪತ್ತಿಹೇತವೇತ್ರಯವಿಶಾಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ವಯಂ ನುಮಃ ಜನ್ಮಾಧ್ಯಸ್ಯತೋನ್ವಯಾತರತಶ್ಚಾತ್ತೇಷ್ವಿಘ್ನಸ್ವರಾ ತೇನೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಹೃದಯ ಆದಿಕವೇ ಮುಹ್ಯಂತ ಯತ್ಸೂರಯ ತೇಜೋ ವಾರಿ ಮೃದಾಮ್ಯಥಾಮಯೋತ್ರಸರ್ಗೋ ಮೃಷಾ ಧಾಂ ಸ್ವೇನ ಸದಾ ನಿರಸ್ತಕುಹಕ ಸತ್ಯಂ ಪರಂ ಧೀಮಿ ಧರ್ಮ ಪ್ರೋಜಿತ ಕೈಟವೋತ್ರ ಪರಮೋ ನಿರ್ಮತ್ಸರ ಸತಾಂ ವೇದ್ಯ ವಾಸ್ತವಮತ್ರ ವಸ್ತು ಶಿವದ ತಾಪತ್ರಯೋನ್ಮೂಲ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ಭಾಗವತೆ ಮಹಾಮುನಿ ಕಂ ವಾ ಪರೇರೀಶ್ವರ ಸದ್ಯೋ ಹೃದಯವರುದ್ಯತೆತ್ರ ಕೃತಿ ಶುಶ್ರೂಷುಬಿಸ್ತಕ್ಷಣ ಹರಿಯೋಂ ಇನ್ ಗ್ರೀಟಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ನಾಯಗ್ರ ಫಾಲ್ಸ್ think of a chair think of every detail of a chair the material the comfort the price are you still thinking of a chair <laughs> you gave up after one second <laughs> think of the creator think of the nature of the creator the forms of the creator the names of the creator are you thinking of the creator when you think of that which is limited the chair is an example you can't think so much about this so you become distracted and when one is distracted they feel restless the limited leads to distraction distraction leads to restlessness when you think of the limitless not limited but limitless you're not distracted you're focused the nama rupa guna dhama and you feel rested you feel restful our course is not to think of that which is limited but that which is limitless our course is on rest how to sleep better how to wake better how to be better last week we focused on the varna dharma what are the responsibilities based on one's varna that is one's color their personality type and overall the thought flow the teaching is your dharma should be leading you to your swadharma 
Your swadharma is your infinite nature. Existence, awareness, joy. All you do, all your responsibilities are to lead you to your swadharma. Share differently. Be patient with fulfilling your responsibilities. Being patient means less moody, less dislikes. Be patient with fulfilling your responsibilities because this will lead to fulfillment. Absolute fulfillment. With everyone at home, increase your focus on why you're doing, decrease your focus on what you're doing. Many have shared with me how they feel like they're not doing anything important right now. And I keep sharing, it's not what you do, it's why you do. In which case, whether you're commuting or not, if your why is deep, is ideal, you feel that then. You feel great. We shifted from Varna Dharma to Ashrama Dharma. The responsibility is not based on your personality, but your position. Really how old you are. We started with the responsibilities of a Brahmachari. A brahmachari is someone between the age of zero and 24. And remind me, what are the two responsibilities or the two ways to live for a brahmachari? They should live with humility, that's right, and simplicity. Humility and simplicity. Today we're going to focus on Grahastas, but before we do, let's review Vanaprastas. Those who are transitioning towards retiring from a focus on pleasure, position, possession, position. That is when you're between the age of 48 and 60. So you get to retire by the time you're 48, yes? <laughs> And what are the two responsibilities or characteristics? Minimalism, that's right, and austerity. So you keep on reducing your input, but that doesn't mean you feel lesser. And then the responsibilities of a sannyasi between the age of 60 and 72, what are those two responsibilities? Be Quiet and be content. Quietude and contentment, that's right. We were introduced to Rishi Dattatreya. And I shared with you how he looked. And Rishi Pralada, Raja Pralada, was learning from him how to be independently joyous. One who is tamasic, darkness inside. Such a person escapes from their responsibilities, which means they escape from their own nature. That is not contentment. That is ignorance. Ignorance is bliss. People share. I never said the bliss part. I only shared the ignorance part. It's like being on drugs. If I have so much pain in my body and one puts drugs inside of me, that pain is subdued, but that Pain is not reconciled. Yes, it's escaping. And someone who's sattvic, someone who has light inside, clarity, that person is embracing their responsibilities. And so they're embracing their nature. That person doesn't need drugs to transcend that pain. They're able to shift their identification from the body to Brahman. So this idea of a tamasic person being content, that is not the right deduction. Only a sattvic person can be content. And now our focus, what are the responsibilities of a grahastha? The seventh skanda, the 14th 
Adhyaya, the 15th Shloka, 7, 14, 15. The dialogue between Raja Yudhishthira and Rishi Narada continues. This is the completing dialogue. Devan Rishi Nirbhutani Pitran Atmanam Anvaham Svavritya Gata Vittena Yajeta Purusham Pritak. Here, Rishi Narada tells Raja Yudhishthira Deva Rishi Nir means not man, but humans Bhuta beings, Pitra, one's ancestry, with one's materials which one has created in a dharmic way, in a responsible way, Yajeta Purusham. One should offer this being dedicated to the divine. So this is the literal meaning. And I have to share that with you. But now here's the flow of thought. Rishi Narada is sharing with Raja Yudhishthira how a householder should live. And there's many messages. I'm summarizing this for you, that which is important. Here's one way, and I'm reading the English for you. Deer, camels, donkeys, monkeys, rats, serpents, birds, flies, etc., must be looked upon as one's own children. What, what high aspirations Rishi Narada is telling Raja Yudhishthira about how we should live. Now think logically about this. If you love some, it's called attachment. If you love all, that's not attachment, that's detachment, no? That's independence. We tend to get lost, we tend to love only our children, our grandchildren. But here, it's not just humans, it's all beings. Think again. You have to create in the right way, which means you cannot harm the environment. I had read a stat, and I'm not going to be detailed about this because I don't want to make a mistake, but in the near future, there's going to be more plastic than fish in our oceans. Can you imagine that? And it's because this is not being addressed. Fish are to be used. They're not our children. They look different. Srimad Bhagavatam has covered all of this. Another message is, for one to be content with whatever dharma, artha, kama comes into their life. Dharma's position, artha's possession, kama's pleasure. Because your focus should be on peace. If you're exerting so much for artha, for pleasure, you don't have the bandwidth for peace. And now this specific message. Okay, you need some uh, background to this. We have 16 samskaras in our tradition. The 13th, one through 13, they're all done for us. The 13th is vivaha. People offer to us, people perform for us. Number 16 is known as antyeshti. When the body dies and one should be enlightened. That also is done for us, is facilitated for us. The only two samskaras that we do for ourselves, that we perform for ourselves, number 14 is known as pancha mahayagnya, and 15 is known as Vana Prastha. This shloka is highlighting Pancha Mahayagnya. So now I'll share in English in detail. 
There are five facets of life that are perpetually giving to us. And what is shared here and what is traditionally shared are not the same. So I'm going to share what I find to be more meaningful. The first facet of life that's giving to us, and this is as if far away, is known as Deva Rina. What nature's forces are giving to us. A fine one right now being the sun. For all of us who are inside so much, you know, our son Vyasa is going to turn three soon. We are grateful that the weather is warming because he can just be outside then. Deva Rina. Closer than that, Bhuta Rina. The debt we owe to nature's beings, like honeybees, like worms, those that are serving us through the environment, trees, flowers. Closer than that is known as Samajrina, the debt we owe to society, those who serve society. And that's so evident right now, no? Our frontline workers, our background workers. Closer than that is known as Pitrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
a lot of us fail here. Remember in Magical Mantras how I highlighted we are ritualists. That's not dynamic. That's not real. Especially all of us who have access to these actual, factual insights to not live as ritualists, to grow up in our practices. And the last shloka we will study, the seventh skanda of course, the 15th adhyaya, the 17th shloka. Okay? 7, 15, 17. Sada santushta manasaha, sarva sukhama yadishaha, sharkara kanta kadibhyaha, yatopanat padashivam. The dialogue continues in what Rishinarada says. For one who is happy, inside, it doesn't matter what place they're in. And then gives a comparison, an analogy. For one who is wearing shoes, it doesn't matter if they step on thorns or stones. They can go anywhere. Yes? Okay. I want to read to you, again, the emphasis on looking after all beings before I elaborate on this. Nei tadrishaha paro dharmo nirnam sadharmam ichatam ichatam. For one who wants to practice dharma, wants to be responsible in a deeper way, then there is no greater practice, paro dharmo, than, and here's the next line, nyaso dandasya bhuteshu. Mano vak kaya jasya yaha to not cause sadness. No danda through thought, word, or deed to any beings, to any part of creation. You know, you've heard many times Ahimsa is the paramo dharmo. And here's a reference to that. The sensitivity to the creator in creation is a fine way to be responsible. Our whole lifestyle will change if we know such messages. Further on, Rishinarada says, karma yajna has to evolve to jnana yajna. Karma yajna is when you engage in rituals. Rituals means... I am in a controlled environment and I feel good, but that has to evolve to feeling the same goodness in an uncontrolled environment. From karma yajna to jnana yajna. When one engages in such generosity, such gratitude, one feels happy. One feels happy as their nature they don't need to go anywhere then. In Meaningful Mornings, I've been sharing the difference between loneliness and aloneness. A lonely person feels that they have to go here, they have to be with these people. It's called FOMO, right? But someone who is engaged in aloneness, they have found happiness inside. Do they need to leave their home? For functional reasons, yes, but fundamentally they don't. See, the strongest message about staying home should come from Bhagavatam. <laughs> not hospitalists, not musicians, but Bhagavatam. <laughs> to be happy independently. Then you don't have to go anywhere. And even if you do go somewhere, it doesn't matter. For a lot of us, we're happy when we're around happy people. But as soon as we're around people who are unhappy, negative, that all falls apart, correct? This is the training that householders have to engage in. Being a householder is hard. If you think of 
When you're a student, you're by yourself, correct? When you're retired, you're sort of by yourself. When you've, you're living as a renunciate, you're by yourself too. There's no one there to challenge you. <laughs> I mean that in a good way and in a bad way, correct? My wife challenges me all the time. Are you sure what you said is right? <laughs> Are you sure this parenting style works? There's no one there to tell you you're wrong. Yes? See, if none of you had my email address and you could never write to me about how you didn't understand this or you don't like this or why are you like this, but you all have my email address, right? That's my bad fortune. <laughs> but you have access to challenging me, to saying I'm wrong, correct? I can't block your email. I'm not even that intelligent enough to do that. Yes? It's hard. Today, Sheila has been having a challenging day. She was sharing with me that it's simply hard to be a parent, to be a parent of two young kids. And I can very much appreciate that. And I told her, don't be so hard on yourself. It is hard, but you being hard on yourself makes it harder then, yes? So we need to feel that so we don't become dejected. If you become dejected, you're part of the problem, not part of the solution. So summarizing this, these are the two qualities that we need to develop. We, already, we are already humble and simple, yes? That's what you learned as a, as a student. <laughs> as grahastas, to be generous and grateful. Those are the two. Offensively, generous. You keep on giving. Defensively, to be grateful. Doesn't matter what happens outside, you will be content. And I forgot to read this to you. I shared this in the satsang yesterday. I'll read the English to you, okay? If a perso person is happy within, listen carefully, this is a deep message. If a person is happy within, he would surely be happy even with some liquid food to imbibe once. <laughs> I've shared with all of you so many times, the day that food comes in a pill, I want it. Because food is so functional. That's the point that's being shared here but we become such deep foodies. How much time goes into buying food, preparing food, eating food, talking about food? See, we're trying to find happiness in food. But for someone who's happy, just give them some nourishment in the form of liquid. I am going to photocopy this and put this on our fridge <laughs> for the sake of being generous and grateful. As the <clears throat> vanaprastha, to live in minimalism and austerity, and as a sannyasi, to live quietly and with contentment. This seventh skanda finishes with Raja Yudhishthira asking Rishi Narada, How do you know all of this? <laughs> That's a good question. You know, you're telling me all of this, but how do you know this? Why should I? Have faith in what you're sharing. And so he says, in my previous life, I was a Gandharva, a musician. My name was Upa Bara Barhana, Upa Barhana. And one day I was playing with great people and I was being arrogant. And since they're great, they wanted to teach me not to be arrogant, but to be humble, so they shared, in your next lifetime, may you be born without support. And so he essentially was born as a orphan. And the idea being is, we take for granted where this support has come from, correct? That's what an arrogant person does. So may you be born without that. But these great people never just left him. In his next lifetime, when he was born without support, he was born in the company of sadhus. 
A sadhu is someone who doesn't work for themselves, but they work for you. They work for your welfare, for your evolution. And that's how this Gandharva became a Deva Rishi. Now he has a purpose to sharing this with Raja Yudhishthira. He says, one should relate to their guru, but never compare themselves to their guru. Relate, yet not compare. Relate because if you can relate to your guru more, if your guru is more relatable, then the message will relate to you more, will be internalized smoother. Yes? It's like, we had a parenting retreat in Chicago, I think two years ago, three years ago, three years ago. And the teachers were Vilasaniji, who many of you know, Swami Sharanananda, who many of you know, and myself. And uh, all three of us, when we were introducing this parenting retreat, realized that none of us were parents. <laughs> here, here at that point for me. <laughs> Three of us speaking on parenting, yet none of us have any experience directly with being a parent. That's why we had Vyasa, just so I can become a better teacher to all of you. <laughs> but you should not compare, though. Because in comparing, in relating, you're lifting yourself up to your guru and comparing, what are you doing? Pulling your guru down to yourself. Those are totally different. And Rishi Narada is telling Raja Yudhishthira this because Raja Yudhishthira doesn't realize that Bhagavan Krishna is living with them. You're comparing Bhagavan Krishna to yourself as your cousin, as a friend, as a minister. And you don't realize this is the creator. And this skanda is over with... Raja Yudhishthira being so overwhelmed that the creator has expressed his love for Raja Yudhishthira and really all of us by coming to be with us. <laughs> awesome. Iti saptamaha skandaha samaptaha. Haryom tatsat. Oh.